Hey, how's it going? I'm not, and I made this. This is a list of all the cards in Gwent you probably do not want to craft. You can access this, yeah, this Google table, this Google Doc, with a link that I'll post in the comments or in the description. For now, for this video, we'll focus on the neutral cards. There are 37 cards that are neutral and that you probably do not want to craft. What does a card have to do to get on my list? Well, the rules are simple. It is rare. You barely see it. It's not really present in the metagame. The card has barely any potential, actually probably mostly no potential with the upcoming expansion Master Mirror. The card has to have very little potential for the seasonal modes, also very little potential to help you with quests. And lastly, the card has to have very very little meme potential. That's it. Simple as that. So. Let's go to Gwent and let's talk about all the cards, all the neutral cards that made it on my list. First of all, you're probably gonna notice that all the cards in this video will be premium. That means that I have crafted them, I have even crafted a premium version of them. That's because I'm crazy, do not focus on that. Also, enjoy all the premiums that you otherwise would probably rarely or actually never see. So, let's begin. First of all, Phoenix. It's a 4 point card, 13 provisions. If you get the Phoenix out in all the rounds in round 1, 2, 3, you'll get 12 points from that. But it also means that you'll have to play every single round and you'll have to draw Phoenix in round 1. Well, Having to play such a low tempo card in round 1, first of all, is yeah very counterproductive. You wanna dish out some tempo, dish out some points in that round. So Phoenix with his 4 points is not going to help with that. Next, you'll have to probably win round 1 so you can use Phoenix and his 4 points of carryover to push round 2. So this makes Phoenix a bit of a liability, forcing you into a round plan, even if in some matchups you probably would have wanted a longer round 3. Yeah, it's really a bit of a gameplay hurdle. Which is why Phoenix is just unaccosted, underpowered and not worth crafting. Next off, Sahil. The veterans among you probably remember Jason's F Sihil moment. Well, <laughs> Sihil was properly F'd. It was nerfed, it was given a cooldown of 2, before it had a cooldown of 1. And yeah, the provisions are still plenty high. If you play Sihil, you want to use it in a long, very long round 3. Probably with all 10 cards played. Also, you'll need some setup tools, which means you'll have to play an engine deck. Some units that ping, some spears maybe that ping, deal a bit of damage to get the cards in a Sihil range, and this is a liability. Basically, you play an engine deck, the opponent notices, wins round 1, somehow pushes you into round 2, and then in round 3, you won't really have the engines and won't really have the round length profit from Sihil anymore. So yeah, the deck that you have to build around Sihil basically makes the card less usable, maybe against less experienced players, maybe if you're very lucky but I wouldn't even use Sihil in an artifact quest deck. So let's move on. 
Primordial Dao. Yeah, the Primordial Dao has no ability, so... So, yeah. Let's look at the points and let's look at the provisions. It's 9 points, 11 provisions. That's not good. Basically, we're in a monster faction already, so... 9 points, what's that? Uh, 9 provisions, you can get... Yeah, 8 points for 9 provisions. With Thrive, with Vampire Synergy, with some Swarming, so... Yeah, let's look at 8 provisions. We have... Goliath. Who also has more points than provisions. Basically, if you want to play a card, it should have at least as much provisions as points. Actually, it should tend towards more points than provisions. So Primordi Primordial Dell is, yeah, very bad value. Even if you want to synergize it, you of thrive with it. The factions that want to play it have better tools. Ockvist. The last time I've seen that one played was probably in the Ada and Hubert Reich days. But Hubert Reich was reworked quite a while ago, so Octavist, Ockvist hasn't seen much play. Actually, no play at all. And with Wild Boar being around to yeah, help Dagua Greatsword decks, Ockvist doesn't really have a place in Gwenda anymore. His order ability makes him very liable to removal. At 5 points he's the perfect target for Elzo's Thunder or similar 5 damage special cards, which, yeah, plenty of people are running. He can be locked, so yeah. He won't go through most of the time, and even if he goes through, there's better alternatives and yeah, decks don't tend to swarm that much anymore and just for the one point damage, he isn't worth it, honestly. Vendeline Vainglory has a nice tune in his streaming, but that's all the positive things I can say about it, actually. There's just not that many beasts around anymore. There was in the past a beast master deck where you, yeah, your whole deck strategy revolved around buffing beasts to 10 plus points, but now Line Vainglory just doesn't have the targets. Plenty of decks don't run any beasts at all, so he'll be a, be a 5 or 10 brick, so that's weird, right? At 10 provisions. 10 provisions you'll get to play Igni, which is much much better removal than Dandelion Vainglory. There's really no reason to play him, even Vanilla Geralt is better than him, because he'll find better targets, stronger targets. So let's move on. Enraged Ifrit. Yeah, it's a 4 point for damage card. We have a couple of them. That makes him bad. There's one-eyed Betsy. She can deal six damage if the target has armor. There's Regis, who has the advantage of having a banish ability added to him. So there's two cards to do a Fritz job better than him. For the same provisions, for the same points, there's no reason to play him, even if you want two damage cards, two cards to deal more damage, you'll rather play Regis and Betsy, but not Ifrit. Marigold's Hailstorm. So, which decks want to damage five enemy units by two? Spell decks? They won't leave that many units alive. Greatsword decks? They have a wild boar. 
they have Hamdal. They have much better tools to achieve that goal of damaging plenty of units. So, very gold Sailstorm. While it's probably decent value for its provisions, it's just not that usable. And especially if you get flat in round two, have to use it in round three. You just won't have the targets, which makes Marigold's Hailstorm just not flexible enough. Commander's Horn. Do you want to boost five adjacent units by two? Probably no. No ris disrespect to McBeard, but Commander's Horn just isn't that good. Talking about the card, of course, not the podcast. Well, Swarm Decks. They have more than 5 units, they probably want to use Bone Talisman with Triss to get a couple more uses out of it. Maybe they'll use Yen in those beast decks, buffing all the beasts, but just buffing 2 by 2 and just buffing 5 units who have to be adjacent, so you're very vulnerable to some damage, some movement. Renesorn just is too hard to set up and too low value. Aguaza. Well, do you wanna lock units these days? Probably no, probably you wanna destroy them because purifiers are just just a bit too available. There's just too many purifiers around to make lock really worth it. Also, the range ability, remove a unit's lock. How old is that? When were locks that meta that you had to have a card which removes locks? And this is gonna be a bit of a theme in the uncraftable bronze, uh, in the uncraftable neutral cards. Unlock just isn't that good. Really, not really relevant anymore. Also, paying two provision points for a lock isn't that good. Probably Aguaza could be brought up to an 8 for 9 and have her range ability changed to a purify. Yeah, Aguaza just is a bit too expensive. Maybe as a 5 or 6 with lock and unlock. A 5 or 7 with Lock and Purify. Yeah, actually, Aguaza just isn't needed. The last wish, moving on to some more special cards a spell. Spells can't really be tutored, so that's yeah, the first disadvantage. The second one is this word here Banish. If you get two gold cards, you'll have to banish a gold card. You won't even discard it. So if you, for example, get Morgvark and let's say Wild Boar. You want to play Wild Boar, but you don't want to play Morgvark. You have to banish Morgvark. He won't go on a battlefield. He'll be banished for eternity. The last wish is a liability in that you can't control which units get banished and also for tutor it's just too expensive. For 8 provisions you get marching orders, which can control which card you get. And also, War Council. If you're in Nilfgaard, at least. Trial of the Grasses. That was a nice quest in Witcher 3, but it's not really a nice alchemy card. A bit of a liability because it damages by 6, so there's not that much armor synergy, armor synergy. Also, it sets the unit's power to 12, it doesn't boost by 12. So, yeah, you can't really use it in Skellige of Wound decks, and outside of Witcher decks, you probably don't want to play it. And actually, even if you run a Witcher deck, like in the Season of the Wolf, in the seasonal mode, you wouldn't run Trial of the Grasses. 
just because it's really not worth it. Witches are also not that relevant anymore, so you won't have Eskel, Lambert and Vesemir to set to 12. And if one of them dies, fine, I'll get to set the other one's power up. Even with Igni, it's not worth it, because Igni is usually one of the last cards you play. It's just really not worth it, and really not that usable. Moving on to cards that are really not that usable. Mandrake. You have to have a unit which order ability is, first of all, has already gone through, wasn't locked, wasn't destroyed the unit with the order ability, wasn't moved. So yeah, first of all, you have to have an order engine that survived. Then you have to have it survive a second time. So if it was inked a bit first the first time and then it was already damaged, you'll get to reset it. Yeah, it'll get a couple of points back. But how often is that usable? How often is that useful? Also, you just need some order abilities that are worth probably rationally 9 plus points for Mandrake to be worth it. Yeah, it's not that bad. It's not that good. Maybe it's usable with Batier if you get a good defender going. But, but yeah, I've never really seen a Mandrake deck, not even a meme Mandrake deck. So it lands on a trash pile. Do not use that card if you if you're serious. If you're not meaning harder than me. Harder than I could ever imagine. Next up, Vikos Rock Slide. 8 damage. That's really good value. 8 damage for 8 provisions. Usually something like that would be balanced a bit low provisions so maybe 8 damage for 9 provision would be the usual CPR math but Becker's Rock Slide just isn't used that much because there's no real 8 power targets 7 power targets to remove an Imperial Formation maybe they'll buff their units to 7 but yeah especially especially as now we have so much poison around, Becker's Rock Slide isn't really worth it. I've never seen it played. I don't think it's even played that much in the current Season of Magic Seasonal mode. Which makes it not worth it to be crafted. Next up, Glorious Hunt, a tactic card, but Nilfgaard Tactics wouldn't use that. There's not that much high base power around unless you play against monsters. So Glorious Hunt just doesn't find that many good matchups. And there's not really a high base power unit that you want to remove for reasons other than tempo. And that's where Poison gets going. Glorious Hunt, just not a useful ability. Next up, Another not really useful ability, Olgurt von Everick. If he were to heal and purify himself, maybe he would be slightly more useful, but he's the worst Olgurt. There's another one, Olgurt Immortal. That one's at least semi decent in some Skelliger decks. I've seen him as a counter to Shillard in some seasonal modes. But yeah, Olgert von Everick, not really useful. The enemy does lots of random damage, which isn't really a thing right now. Maybe he'll be useful in a whatever that Skellige ability is meta. The one that deals 8 random damage pings. But yeah, really no reason to give up 2 points just for the heals, because the enemy your opponent can just target your brother units. 
Frenzy Dow is the worst bomb healer. If it were an 8 for 8 and this for an enemy artifact, if it were at least a 7 for 8, maybe it would be worth considering, but if you can tag with a bronze card, with a 5 provision bronze card, then you're most of the, of the time just much better off. Next up, Iris Companions. A tutor which can just discard you your card that you just picked. It's very unreliable if you play it late in the round. The probabi probability is higher that you discard the just drawn card. If, if you play it early in the round, you just can't control which card gets discarded. It may discard another wincon that you have already drawn. Or it can, as 9 cards in hand, just discard the card you have drawn. It has really bad low rolls and yeah, this ability just isn't worth 3 points. Next up, Unicorn and Chironex. They were just power crept. If you play one of them, the opponent immediately does 4 damage, removes them. And especially Unicorn is a bit weak in this current poison heavy meta. Boosting a unit by 6 points just creates unnecessary high power targets that are perfect poison targets. In Chironex, 6 points of damage. Not really that useful, actually. You can get some better combos off, you can get actually some more synergy off if you use another. If you use your 16 provisions in another way. Next up, Tesha Mutna Sword. Units with shields that have more than 5 points. The only one I can really think of right now that gets played at least in 10% of the faction's decks is the Golden Realms Defender, the Mister of Troy, Donimir of Troy. And yeah, actually, purifying him would be much easier than running Tesha Mutna Sword, which will just be a two points more expensive Elzo's Thunder in most matchups. Not really worth it, because the meta just doesn't have shields and really in the near future won't have that many shields. Speaking of shields, the Wyvern Scale Shield. It's a bit of a bummer that CDPR balances boosts and damages the same. Let's look at seven provisions. We have the Mastercrafted Spear. Four points of damage, it can set up some stuff. It can set up removal, it can set up Sihil. But why but yeah, Wyvern's Kale Shield just doesn't have that synergy. Boosting by four. Not even Northern Realms boost decks need this ability. It's just overcosted with an ability that you really really don't need. Next up, abilities that you really don't need, White Frost. Which decks run more than one artifact in one round? Even double scenario decks don't run two artifacts in the same round. There's just never really been a meta in the past year or so where White Frost would have even been remotely useful. If you can run a healer, White Frost just is not good. Epidemic, paying 5 provisions to destroy a 4 provision card. First off, a bad trade off. Usually, you want your techs, your yeah, counters to be less expensive than the stuff you are countering. So, if Epidemic was a 4 provision, Card, then maybe it would be worth thinking about, but even without attack, you can tutor it. Just not that useful. 
And also, there's not really five, four provision cost units that you really have to remove that much. There's no four provision units that are buffed, like a bunch. So, Epidemic, yeah, has no real reason to exist in the form that it does right now. Key Shackles locks are, yeah, not that good in the meta where there's lots of purifies going around. Also, if you already lock the unit, why damage it? It gets purified and then you get to damage it again. But then you're speculating on the locks getting countered, so... What's that about? It has an alchemy tag, it's maybe remotely useful in Skellige, but I haven't seen it, like, at all in the past half year. Yeah, a bit sad. Just like Magma Ale. Boosting a unit by 5, liability because of poison, and removing locks, just an outdated ability. There's not that many locks going around, and... Probably you want to go for a Purify instead of a Unlock. I am ale. Just not useful. Rock Barrage. Damaging by 4 and then moving. It's a bit of an overkill. I'd rather do 5 damage and guarantee a kill. Move a unit and have some effect on my side have the flexibility to move my own unit with Straits of Spala, for example. But Rock Barrage is just a bit of a weird effect. I can't really imagine it being useful. Next off, Dancing Star, destroy an artifact. Omniver is better. Omniver allows you to destroy an artifact for 5 provision and gives you 4 points on your side of the board. Then, damaging by 3 for 5 provisions just not that good if you can have Elzers. Rather, I'd run Elzers and a Bomb Heaver than Dancing Star and lose out if it becomes actually useful. Lose out on the points. Lose out on the, flex on the removal flexibility. Next up, another bomb that also isn't really useful, Red Haze. I've seen, tre I've seen Treason Going really blank, playing for 0 points in a short round 3, Red Haze has the same issue. Also with all the armor running around, with all the defenders, you won't really get good targets for it. Red Haze, there's just no real opportunities for it. Maybe every 4th matchup you'll get a real good kill with it. But wouldn't you rather run something useful at 5 provisions? Something that synergizes with your deck a bit better? I don't know. Red Haze just seems very weird to me. I don't think I've ever seen it played. Not a single time since it was released with Crimson Curse. Like over a year ago already. Next up, the Traveling Merchant, a card with a bit of a dark past. When it just was introduced, it had a severe bug. It was abusable, it was abused, there were a couple of timeouts for players. Well, Traveling Merchant, shuffle a card and then draw a card. So, if I'm not wrong, you'll be able to just draw the same card you just shuffled again. You also have no real control what you draw with him. Because the shuffle happens before the draw, so even if you use Albrecht, for example, or Fisher King, to put something on top of your deck, there is this little, little chance, well, depending on your deck size, of just drawing the same card again. Also, just another mulligan. At that point cost, at that provision cost, yeah, I don't think a mulligan is really worth it. 
Just swapping another card. Caravan, Caravan Guard, it came out with Merchant of the Fear. Bit of a newer card, but still. I don't think I've ever seen this played outside of Arena. Well, it came out in the same expansion where Poison and Tall Punish became really relevant, really strong, really efficient. So, Caravan Guard is a bit of a Tall Punish. It's just a pure value card, but in a meta that tries to avoid big units because of Poison, you wouldn't play Caron Guard, and if you want to counter all units, then you do something that really gets rid of them, and not just gets rid of a third of the points. It's pretty weird. I, I really don't understand what the design team thought when they designed that card. T-Bomb. Hasn't been around that much. It has a bomb tag, so it's not really tutorable, unless you really are that crazy and try to run Triss Telekinesis with the Aritium Bomb, at which point 4 points and artifact removal, you're better off running a Bomb Heaver. And for just one provision point more, you get 4 more points, and you get a guarantee that you just never have to play a card for 0 points, never have to just discard a card. D-Bomb, just having that possibility of it hitting zero points makes it incredibly bad. Clear Skies, another unit, uh, another special card. It's a special card, as that flame symbol here shows. Well, yeah, it can hit for zero points and it has an extreme downside in the form of the competition that it has with Thor. For the same four provisions, you get a way out if the opponent doesn't play row effects. So even if you clear two row effects, you get a two point boost. If you clear two rows with clear skies, you get zero points boost. If you clear zero rows with clear skies, you get zero points boost, but if you clear Zero rows with four, you get four points of boost. That was a bit of a tongue twister, so let's move on to Samum. Three points of damage, already not that good, especially as there's plenty of units who are four provisions and who do three damage. And then the death blow comes into play. Death blow, move adjacent units. To the other row. When is that really useful? The only scenario I could think of where someone is actually useful would be charge northern realms. With a Visigota and then there is two row bound engines next to him. Maybe a dandelion, maybe a... I just can't manage to think about another Robant engine right now, but yeah, that is not a deck that's being run a bunch right now, so Samum just doesn't have a reason to exist. Nice premium though. Four more to go, it's almost over. We have Inspirational Ballad and Undying First, who both apply a status effect for six turns. Let's look at Inspiration no Ballad for this discussion, just because it's a bit more pleasant to look at. Well, 6 turns, that's a lot. Not many rounds go for 6 turns. If you draw this in a short round 3, you'll have to first of all have a unit set up, and then you'll play Inspiration no Ballad for Two points of boost? That's plenty bad. Also, the opponent can just purify that. Purifies are pretty common. The opponent can just remove the unit, just do a bit of damage and then 
all the vitality is gone, torn to shreds. The opponent can just pass. Just pass out of the round and you just play the special card for what? 1 point, 2 points? You'll have to wait until all the damage arrives, so you'll have some catching up to do. Inspirational Ballad, even if the unit has some boost synergy, it's not that good. And same with Undying First. And here you don't get the initial boost that Vitality gives you. The opponent just has this one turn more time to get rid of the bleeding. Yeah. Not even a vampire, a status deck, a bleeding deck would run this. No reason for it to exist really. Maybe if the if this ability was split into free damage and free bleeding, maybe that would be good. Same with inspirational ballad. Free boost, free vitality, but this way. No, really no. Then there's another sort of parallel design, Wolfpack and Peasant Militia. Four points for four provisions just isn't good, especially with these seven points for four provision cards coming out with Master Mirror. Wolfpack, this is really sad. It should at least get a bonnet ability. Same with the Peasant Militia. There's just always a there's just always a faction card, or even a neutral card, that provides much better value than this. And on this note, yeah, we've gotten through all the neutral cards that I consider to not be worth crafting. This video ended up being a bit longer than I expected. So, yeah, other factions, other videos, stay tuned, stay tuned, subscribe on YouTube, follow me on Twitch, join my Discord to keep up with all the things I do, all the content I produce on a semi-irregular basis. Hope you learned something, hope you just discovered some cards that you haven't thought about in a while. I really want to hear your opinions, which cards I should have put in this list, which cards I shouldn't have put in this list, which is maybe even more important to me. Yeah, I want to know what I can do better, what I can add, what I can change in this list, let me know in the comments on Discord. Thanks for watching, see you next time.